Hey y'all, so I am here at Wall Springs Park. We're going to do another walk with me. I'm holding you in the other hand, so I'm sideways. Here, let's do this. Be thankful you're not as close as you were the other day. Okay, so we're gonna walk around Wall Springs Park in Palm Harbor, and I will show you all the great things here. And um, yeah, have a good time. There's great history behind this park, so let's go take a walk around, and then I will show you how you can get all the history later. Okay, so Wall Springs Park has um, picnic shelters, a playground, butterfly garden, the famous springs that we'll walk by in a minute, and um, an observation tower, little walking trails, and uh, some fishing piers. So lots going on around here. And of course, this is the butterfly garden. Springs is a natural freshwater spring that was used as a quote-unquote healing place way back when. A little history of it. So there were there were actually there was a like a bathhouse here. Lots of fish in here, which is why they prevent or don't allow any fishing or netting in here.
So once you come out of the um, spring area over there, there's just this nice wide paved walkway all the way back to the other parts of the park, which are by the water and the observation tower and all that. And it makes for a nice little afternoon walk. Some of our local plant life. And there are birds and um, there are a couple of other... There's a fishing pier back behind me, which I forgot about. Up in the shallows of all this. And then that spring, eventually it runs out into the little pond and then it runs through this drainage system out into St. Joseph Sound and the Gulf of Mexico eventually. Looks like it's low tide. There's some sandbars sticking up. Again, no fishing. There's where the little the little inner pond lagoon area. And back that way, behind in the distance is the uh, the spring that feeds all of this water. house over there is either new or newly remodeled since I saw it last. I can see across the way a roseate spoonbill. It's that pink bird, if you can zoom in. Let's see what we can get here. Right there. little egret, finding him some dinner. They're not typically very afraid of people. He probably sees people walk by here all the time and stop to take pictures of them. What we have here are the Tidal marshes or the, the mangrove, the saltwater mangrove estuary areas here, which are vital to Florida for, um, you know, all kinds of little animals growing there. That's salt slash brackish water. And it's a place where baby fish are born and where little birds hang out and eat. And frogs, of course, you heard those. So it's a um, very important part of our ecosystems here in coastal Florida. And also, it is um, a great filtration system. So, for instance, when hurricanes come through, the mangroves, first of all, act as a breakwater for um, storm surge. And they also... Oh, look, a path. They also, um, like, filter out um, land garbage, man-made garbage that gets tossed and blown out there so that it doesn't get out to the sea. We don't want it in the mangroves either. Um, but at least it does act as a sort of filtration system. So 
So back on this side, there are bathrooms right ahead of us again. Picnic shelters, um, mosquitoes at this time of day because it's hot and the wind dies down. Out here, there are also bike racks, um, benches, trees to climb. Someone's beer. And of course, as you walk back through here, Minus the leaf noise, as you walk back through here, you can see a little bit of what undeveloped Florida would have looked like with the palm trees and the oak trees, pine trees even. A lot of these vines are not native. Some are. The little um, palmettos. Even the cedar, which is that pine tree in front of us right there. Park also has these, well this one I can tell what it is. The other ones I couldn't tell what they were, but these very bizarre benches like this. And these higher what we call hammocks here in Florida. These higher hammock areas would have been where Native Americans would have made their home. So, they're called hardwood hammocks because they are, um, you know, they have hardwoods in them, like the oak trees and the pine trees. It rained a lot a couple of days ago, so they're standing water in quite a few places where there normally wouldn't be. Another one of those strange fish benches. This little art installation here is made out of sails like the sails that on, a, on the little sailboats. There is the observation tower. I think it's 30 feet. But first, let's take a little side trip out here to the water. Looks like the sea grapes here are fruiting also. Those little crabs live in the mangrove trees, and they freaked me out the first time I saw them um, from the kayak because they were covering the trees, and they, that was just—it was just a little too much. So this is just one of the little inner waters around here. Okay, we're going back, and um, we're going to climb to the top of the observation tower. I am not going to have you guys on with me the whole time because 
you don't want to hear me huffing and puffing to the top of the observation tower. My um, fat, out of shape self. So I will see you up there. Real quick, what makes this observation tower a little bit different than some of the other ones around here is that it has these long ramps for wheelchairs or bicycles. So it makes it very accessible to pretty much anyone who wants to come up here. The view from the very top top, all the way up to the Gulf, way off there in the distance. Okay, let's continue off the tower. Let's go see some fishing piers, some other fishing piers that look out on the Gulf. Or, well, they look out in St. Joseph Sound, which is kind of like the inshores of the Gulf of Mexico, because there are a few barrier islands here that separate the inshore waters from the um, Gulf waters. Like only one pier is open. This one's closed. Ew. Looks like they're doing construction out here fixing this one. Putting some more planks down and using the plastic fake wood, which should last longer. Go to the other one, even though people are fishing over there. I almost walked right by this guy. Okay, we are headed back towards the playground, parking lot. There's one more fishing pier to stop at and see if. Kind of hoping there's no one there. I like the fishing piers to myself. Smile. And because there were people at that other one, I kind of rushed through taking my photographs. So hopefully they, um, the whole two photographs I took from over there turn out good. And I'm hoping the other one has enough view of the sun to give me a good sunset shot. Sunset should be here in a few minutes. Probably about, I don't know, 15?
Ooh. I upset a bird. <laughs> it does happen out here. I think we're not going to see much from that other pier, but maybe just some color in the clouds. So we will get there and check it out. Okay, this is pier number one. And it looks like there's no one here. Whoop, whoop. Pretty shallow back in here, even even when it's not high um, low tide like it is now, or lowering tide. Can't tell if the tide's going in, going out, or looks like maybe it's slack tide. Nothing's moving. Pretty and peaceful out here, isn't it? It's a great park. It doesn't get super, super busy, and even where there are quite a few people out here, it um, it has enough room that you don't ever feel like you're like jumbled on top of other people. Okay, one final place to look at that bridge between the two, between the spring and the little spring ponds. Okay, we're coming to an end of our walk at Wall Springs Park. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And if you're in Pinellas County or visiting soon, I do hope you come out and take a look at the park. Enjoy it, have a picnic, bring the kids, do some fishing, although you probably won't catch much. That water is way shallow. And, um, you know, just enjoy it. The picnic shelters you do have to rent, but the other picnic tables are first come, first serve.